Spring in the Northern Hemisphere is the busiest time of year for tornadoes, but in reality they can happen whenever conditions just happen to be right. To make a complicated story very short, if warm and cold air masses collide over land, you've got a potential tornado on your hands. It can happen even in the middle of winter. In February of 2009, a cluster of tornadoes injured people and destroyed property in the American state of Oklahoma. In addition to being unpredictable, they're also difficult to measure. Building measurement equipment that has any hope of withstanding sustained 400 km per hour winds is no small task. And it has to be portable, because you just never know where the storm is going to track. Doppler radar is often used to measure tornado wind speeds from a distance, but it's not consistently accurate enough to be used as the primary method. And it also can't penetrate the center of the tornado to find the true epicenter of the whole thing. Throughout the 1960s, researchers were using the 125-year-old Beaufort scale, which used the movement of dust and other debris to estimate wind speed. But that was, to say the very least, a little archaic. So in 1971, Tetsuya Fujita at the University of Chicago cooked up the now famous Fujita, or F, scale that extends from 0 to 5. Officially, the scale goes from 0 to 12, but Fujita considered anything beyond an F5 to be inconceivable. The F5 scale was based largely on the amount and severity of damage that a tornado causes, which leaves things pretty open to interpretation. Science and subjectivity don't go very well together, so there was constant controversy in the Fujita scale era. For example, both F4 and F5 level tornadoes can involve vehicles being thrown through the air, but only an F5 can throw the vehicles further than 100 meters. So now you've got meteorologists out there with measuring tapes after a tornado destroys a town. Oh, this car went 102 meters, so it's an F5 for sure. Hang on, hang on, it's a gentle downhill slope, so maybe it rolled or slid those extra few meters. So it's an F4 then? Well, maybe. Next thing you know, they're clobbering each other with pieces of wreckage. So researchers at Texas Tech University cooked up the Enhanced Fujita Scale, which came into effect in 2007 in the US and 2013 in Canada. It was intended to solidify some of the vague wording that the Fujita Scale used to describe damage, and hopefully eliminate problems like the 102 meter car dilemma we talked about a minute ago. It also used four additional decades of measurements to better match wind speeds with the accompanying damage. Even though some of the vagueness has been removed, it is still just a descriptive proxy for actual wind speeds though. Or is it? Let's step into the brand new wind tunnel at the palatial Wild AC World Headquarters to see if we can use the enhanced scale to quit our jobs and become tornado assessors. Have a look at this picture of a ruined mobile home. Good? Good. Okay, straight from the official enhanced Fujita language, in an EF1 tornado, mobile homes can be overturned or badly damaged. If the tornado is an EF2, the mobile home should be completely destroyed. So is this badly damaged, or is it completely destroyed? Hmm. Being completely honest though, it's not quite that hopeless. Each of the EF categories has several descriptive elements of damage, and a range of estimated wind speeds to hopefully pin each tornado down. Although the Fujita scale did have the same basic elements, so maybe it's for the best that the EF scale is only considered to be an enhancement, and not anything revolutionary. The problem is that tornado wind speeds increase and decrease over a matter of seconds. Some tornadoes only last for a minute or two. Add to that the difficulty in getting measuring equipment right into the hellish center of the spinning wind column, and maybe we can all see why a truly objective tornado severity scale probably is not just over the horizon. It commonly takes months to sift through evidence before even giving a tornado a subjective rating. But until someone comes up with something better, we're in for a few more decades of waiting for scientists to determine if the mobile home is completely destroyed or just badly damaged. If you like this video, lay an EF5 beating on the like button. Better not be an EF4, I'll know. Also, subscribe for more from the Wild AC channel. Thanks for watching.